Um, yeah, this is going to be a, uh, a pretty hands-on talk, so uh, I'll get down to some details, but this is what we're here for. So I do represent uh, Viridium. I'm the chief technology officer. Uh, we're a biometric company, but uh, biometrics is one part of identity, and we have to live in identity ecosystem. So we came to WSO2 uh, to round out our product. We, had, uh, we, had, we support uh, SAML with a built-in shibboleth type of uh, um, adapter, but we really wanted to branch out. So we found WSO2 as an integration platform. I advocated that in the company. We did a federated authenticator following the steps uh, uh, on the WSO2 site. And now we're actually, uh, it's part of our product offering uh, to, uh, to some of our customers we have. Um, so bi biometrics is one part of authentication. You have your phone, of course, right? What you have. Uh, you have your passwords and pin codes. That's what you know. And then finally, biometrics, what you are. Now, the, I'll focus on biometrics in this talk because we've seen biometrics. They've been around for 30 years. I, I, I'm actually more, I'm a computer scientist. I'm not a biometric scientist. We have a great staff at Viridium of biometric scientists have focused for uh, several years now. And we're, we, this past year, 2018, has been our first revenue year. Uh, but we've been in existence since 2016. So, um, but because we have these supercomputers in our pockets now, right? that actually biometric sensors are becoming more ubiquitous. Before you needed special hardware, okay? But now this is permeating uh, our existence and it will only increase and hopefully make our life uh, more convenient and more secure. So um, with that, let me outline our products uh, briefly so you get an understanding of the context. And I'll talk about Viridium ID, Viridium AD, and our four fingers touchless, uh, and then biometric authentication in the WSO2 uh, uh, integration and then have some details on configuration. To, uh, what I'm not going to cover are things like uh, ExactMo-based conditional MFA, which is actually new to WSO2. That is, if you're in a bad geolocation, that's not normal for you, or a particular role or transaction type you're trying to do, that you would step off authentication based on that particular uh, operation, right? We definitely have customers that need conditional authentication. Uh, adaptive authentication and uh, uh, adaptive multi-factor authentication. And then I won't talk about the API protection, particularly OAuth 2 supported type of operator. That's not in this talk, but come, after, come talk to me later and we actually can support those uh, scenarios, particularly in uh, our integration with WSO2. So the three products are here, uh, Viridium ID, AD, which is uh, really just Viridium ID with particular adapters for Active Directory, including Azure AD, you know, ADFS, uh, um, and we have a, a tight uh, Citrix Ready solution there for enterprise. And then our uh, sole biometrics for government uh, platforms that need to do legacy matching. I'll talk uh, briefly about that. So <clears throat> our server uh, is uh, the core of our product. We have uh, SDKs for uh, mobile devices, so iOS and Android. And we can accommodate all types of biometrics, including native biometrics like Touch ID and Face ID. We offer our own uh, what's called Four Fingers technology and uh, Face. But we also work with other companies, uh, voice, two voice vendors for plugins. And the reason the server and the mobile SDK are pluggable as an end-to-end -end platform is because we're based on a standard, which is IEEE 2410, it just released its second revision for 2017. It's called BOPS, okay, the Biometric Open Protocol Standard. If you send me an email, uh, I'll send you a copy of the standard uh, and you can look at it, but it is uh, a robust, mature standard. Those that, how many people know BOPS or heard of BOPS? Ah, see, so um, how many people have heard of FIDO and the FIDO Alliance? Ah, a little more hands. So what's the difference here? Well, real briefly, um, BOPS is actually a superset, okay? So FIDO is primarily, well, solely mobile, mobile, right? Which is a great solution. Biometrics never leave the device, okay? That your, so Touch ID, it's all in the TP, TPM, uh, you know, the secure enclave environment and so forth. But we do have, and we don't prescribe, uh, customers around the world that need to do server side. Okay? And without a standard, they're going to roll their own and do it wrong. So this standard says how to do it in all those configurations, 
mobile mobile, meaning you store the biometric on the mobile side, and then where you do the matching, okay? BOPS does all of these, okay? And also accommodates the, you know, the FIDO uh, uh, scenario. So just to tell you, that's what BOPS does. Uh, I'm not gonna go into details about that. Now, as I said, uh, biometrics, the problem with a lot of biometrics companies is you know, they offer that biometric, but you've got to fit within a bigger solution, right? Hey, we have AD for identity, or you know, we're using uh, you know, uh, uh, IBM or Oracle for backend uh, identity management. So you've got to fit within an ecosystem. So uh, <clears throat> a year and a half ago, we rolled out Viridium AD. We saw many of our customers had uh, uh, Active Directory, right, that we're using either in cloud or on-prem. And uh, we said, great. So we did a partnership with uh, Citrix after doing the AD adapter, and it's been a real win here. So we come in, we replace password for primary or support uh, 2FA or MFA. Whatever the customer wants to do, they can configure that. And again, it's been a real win for us doing this uh, replacement. So we roll the product specifically around that, although it is the core of Iridium AD ID with the adapters talking to AD uh, on the back end. I'll talk briefly about Four Fingers uh, Touchless. That's actually a biometric itself that is pluggable into the uh, uh, IEEE platform that our product adheres to. Um, but it itself can be used in many cases, not just for authentication purposes, but we have government customers doing KYC. So you go to a bank, you want a single encounter. I'm gonna do a KYC check, but also uh, enroll for subsequent authentication on the phone. We can do this with one encounter, do that back-end KYC check. So Mexico, Brazil, India, for example, let's take India has the ADAR system. They do KYC checks with fingerprint now. Those do have to be done server-side during a KYC cycle. And our product is a standard product to do those type of checks, right? Now, you, you could also do this with Iris, but not all phones, and I don't think are gonna have Iris, right? Fingerprint is the next best from Iris, and this works on stock Android and iOS phones, right? With a five megapixel camera or better, and with a backlight, okay? So that's one of the great advantages of this, and we own the IP around it, and we've been working with NIST in the US here uh, for several years on what's called the contactless fingerprint capture standard, which is about to be released by NIST. All right, let me turn to uh, why we're here with integration. So we said, let's, uh, uh, you know, there are different authentic federated authenticators. Let's see if we can uh, integrate. And it was actually one of the simplest things, I think, uh, the developers that we had one developer basically do this in under a month. So uh, here, for example, um, make sure I got this right, okay. Um, is you've probably seen the screen before. This is I, the IS uh, default uh, login screen. So we have two modes of integration that are available with the uh, Viridium uh, Federated Authenticator in WSO2IS. And that's what's called push notification mode and a QR code mode. So the push notification mode is you're presented with, uh, and push notification mode is primarily used for 2FA login, okay? So you present your username, password, and then right after that, you are given this particular page which says, ah, you should be looking for a push notification on your phone and a subsequent authentication, okay? It's very much like an OTP type of SMS, except you use the biometric, then releases, and then you're led into the site. So it's basically username and password. It's kind of the typical uh, OTP or SMS push. Let me show you an example. This, is, this should be an animated GIF. It shows you this in action in about 10 seconds. So going to a website, hopefully this will, there we go. Username and password on the right-hand side, our uh, mobile app on the left-hand side. There's the push notification. You're prompted. Now, here's our four fingers technology, which was configured in this case. There we go. And then on the right-hand side, you're let into the site. So that's it. That's the, QR, that's the uh, push notification type of mode. So, uh, this is an eye chart with a sequence diagram, but it shows you how it works. Essentially, you have um, uh, six elements here. The ones that you should primarily be focused on are you start in a browser, you talk to the service provider trying to get access to the resource. Um, the authenticator, the, the federated authenticator in WSO2 then says, ah, okay, show that basic authenticator uh, page 
which is actually uh, another Tomcat uh, app uh, deployed in a WAR file that actually is part of our Authenticator plugin. That shows that page saying, please look for the push notification. Then uh, our server gets involved, right? Uh, WSO2 talks to the Viridium ID server over here, which again uh, follows the IEEE 2410 protocol. That's all documented in that protocol. It's an open standard um, to essentially get a session. So it's what's called a session opportunity. That's a window of opportunity uh, where the, the user can, uh, 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 via push notification, get in. And essentially then, um, there's a handshaking protocol between the service provider, the plugin authenticator, uh, the authentication, the federated authenticator, and our backend. All right, here's another mode, <coughs> QR code based. Instead of a push notification, you go to a, a, a website and you're just shown this, right? No user ID required. You basically go to the site, you're, so you may have a SAML or an open ID connect uh, redirect, okay? So that's how it works, so that's WSO2. We didn't need to wire any of that. Uh, that's already built in and configured. You're shown the, the QR code. That's shown by this uh, extra Tomcat uh, app as well. And I, won't ha I don't have an animated demo of this, but the uh, sequence is very similar. Again, the same uh, six uh, actors here, the browser, the mobile app, service provider, the two parts that are part of the uh, federated authenticator integration in WSO2, and then our server. And here, uh, the QR code is actually, again, part of the BOPS protocol, the IEEE protocol. It actually encompasses, uh, you know, what service provider is this? Here's the session opportunity, and by scanning it, you do need that mobile app, which we have one called the Viridium Authenticator, which is just a vanilla app some of our clients don't they don't want to build their own uh, apps that we provide that, or they wrap it in their SDK and build these calls into their existing application. And then you're in the app. So, uh, and, and uh, the release of our sample application is built around the Travelocity one, which if you're familiar with the WSO2 IS, that's the common example to show you how to get this working. All right, so uh, just some uh, boring details here. You do, um, I uh, have to set up a user store, okay, to, because you're going to need to get the information about the user's device and their contact information, uh, particularly for the push notification. Uh, so uh, here's a user store configuration. We also do require a, a specific um, LDAP uh, uh, attribute that is not by default. It's a user principal name, so that needs to be configured. Uh, as well, so it's pretty simple. So configure user store, configure this one uh, uh, attribute. Um, <clears throat> here is uh, uh, a, an IDP that needs to be done. So here, Viridium QR is the uh, provider name in this particular case. And then you see we're listed the Viridium configurator as one of the many federated authenticators. Uh, we just plug into that same ecosystem. And you can specify there the QR authentication mode. You do have the option of configuring you know, uh, the push notification or well, and then using them. Uh, you could use both or either for different service providers. Um, and then here is uh, the uh, uh, service provider point that you need to configure. Nothing really special here. Uh, in this case, it's a SAML-based SSO. Uh, if you used uh, WSO2 IS, again, this should be pretty familiar in setting up uh, a service provider. And, and in this case, uh, um, I don't, there's nothing really unusual about that, except for that one uh, uh, user principal name property. And then uh, outbound authentication configuration, just choose in this case uh, that uh, uh, QR code is the federated authenticator uh, to use in this particular case uh, uh, for that service provider. Um, and, and here again, uh, configuring, the, uh, 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 configuring the federated authentication you need to specify that Viridium QR or Viridium push. In this case, Viridium push is, is identified, but you see Viridium QR is one of the pull downs. So fairly normal. Again, the integration took us well under a month. Part of that was we ramped up and had a conference call with the, the helpful people at WSO2, and they said, we thought, literally, I remember being on the call, the developer said, hey, should we just follow the example that's online of doing a new federal authentica? Yep, that's pretty much it. And we did it, and it was over. Nothing unusual. 
so two weeks of that were just, we couldn't believe how simple it was going to be, and then the rest of the month was uh, executing it. Um, so this is my closing slide. I just wanted to be uh, uh, pretty simple about this. Uh, biometrics, as uh, uh, Ishara said, uh, biometrics are really ascendant right now. We have uh, platforms and sensors uh, that are going to be even more capable over the years of knowing that it's actually you. I can field some questions about biometrics, about liveness, detecting it's a real hand, and so forth, uh, in the case of the four fingers or even other modes. But, uh, you know, the devices are going to get scarily good at knowing it's you and your device and that you are the one authenticating, right? We'll still have passwords, I think, but we may be able to use one pin on lots of sites, right, in combination with the biometrics, uh, as well as the possession of the device, right? But all of these together form an ensemble of security. Uh, so lots of interest in biometrics. I'll leave, uh, the left-hand side, we also are working with blockchain identity-based work. Okay, so uh, there's work funded by the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. So I actually am doing a lot of work with blockchain identity, what are called decentralized identifiers. So we're a member of the Sovereign Foundation and also the Decentralized Identity Foundation. So I just want to add, we're bringing biometrics to, actually the reason we're doing blockchain is to push your biometric data back to you so you hold it, not in some silo, right? That's the solution there. Is, so we do have these privacy concerns on server side type of uh, issues with storing lots of biometrics, right? You can be as secure as possible. The BOP standard is very secure, but we really want to push biometric data back to you. And finally, I'll wrap up. We're really excited about the new partnership, uh, revamp partnership program here. We really want, we have lots of customers pulling for this and we're, we're on the cusp of uh, OEMing this within our product. Uh, and doing a deal, and we're really excited about that new revamp. revamp. So I will be at the partner uh, day on Wednesday. Um, so we're not currently a certified partner, the solution, but we're really on the cusp of doing it. So anybody interested, please uh, approach me later. Thank you. Any questions? I'm pretty good on time. Okay. Thanks very much, everybody.